I am Dr. Sumaira Kinu from uh, the University of Mauritius. My project advisor is Professor Muna Ashe. My project uh, title is the Development and Implementation of a Portfolio for Undergraduate Medical Students. So my Gantt chart as it was initially, and I followed the steps, I did follow them uh, as per the chart although the timings did change. So we started with uh, seeking ethical approval from the uh, University of Mauritius Ethics Committee. And then we also sought ethics uh, clearance from the Ministry of Health and Wellness because I'm serving the tutors from the uh, Ministry of Health and also the patients whom the students are practicing on. Then, I, of course, I had to intelligently select the team members. As my previous colleagues have said, it's one of the steps to success. And then I, I had to do a workshop to uh, to introduce my topic to the stakeholders. So uh, the stakeholders were then in the, divided into faculty members, the senior management, the administrative staff, and uh, students were a workshop for students was separate. Uh, the designing of the portfolio was taking place at the same time, and the questionnaire uh, what it uh, was designed while the portfolio was being designed, and uh, as soon as it was designed. It was, uh, valid, it was uh, validated. Before implementation of the portfolio, uh, we did a pre-intervention baseline uh, data questionnaire that we introduced to the students to, to have a baseline knowledge about what they knew and what uh, did they understand. We tried the same on the faculty members' response and um, outcome. So I did one short, short come outcome in July, which was four weeks uh, after having introduced the portfolio. And then uh, uh, now I'm taking the uh, I'm doing the final step of collection of the uh, portfolio and the survey forms. Uh, I had two major changes to the project. So the first one was instead of using a, an e-portfolio, we are now using the paper-based portfolio. But then this did come with its own advantage because now I'd be able to compare the benefits of the paper-based portfolio because I'm uh, on the way to introducing the e-portfolio. So I'll be able to compare the paper-based portfolio with the e-portfolio and the benefits of both of them and the disadvantages of both of them. This happened because of lack of funding. We couldn't get funds initially for the e-portfolio and therefore it was difficult to implement it. The second change was because we the ethics clearance was delayed because we had lockdown, uh, we had our third phase of uh, COVID-19 and then we had the lockdown that was extended and uh, no ethics committee for reviews was being held at the Ministry of Health and even the ethics committee at the uh, University of Mauritius were were delaying their work due to lack of staff. And because that was delayed, then uh, the uh, presentation at, uh, through workshops was delayed, but then the rest of the things were uh, normal. But then uh, we also had uh, the semesters that got delayed. So uh, instead of starting in February, we started in May, and therefore in, uh, the portfolio was then implemented in May. Uh, we are doing the data analysis uh, right now. The rest of the steps were as per the previous Gantt chart. Then uh, lessons learned, I think, quite a few. Uh, we need to especially get all stakeholders engaged since the beginning and engaging them doesn't mean just telling them about the project and getting them involved but getting them acquainted with the project and being equally immersive as the main uh, uh, project implementer. Then uh, teamwork is essential but then to have teamwork for success we need uh, to selectively and very intelligently select our team members. We needed very close follow-up and I feel that this is one of the very important lessons learned and it was an advice from my project advisor and uh, when I did uh, the uh, when, when I did uh, check uh, on the feedback from the students and from the faculty members and from the tutors at four weeks eight weeks and now we could find the difference and uh, as soon as we could find gaps we had to uh, come up with uh, ways to fill in the gaps. Adequate planning facilities, the ways to fill in the gaps and all other issues that may arise. Then uh, we also have to anticipate any change that can occur in circumstances, just like we had the lockdowns, we had uh, staff members that got sick, we had students who couldn't come on campus, students who had their placements uh, halted because of uh, pandemic. So we had to keep alternative plans. And uh, then uh, for such uh, projects where technology is involved, where the, the new uh, latest methods of teaching and methods of assessment are involved, funding is essential, especially in uh, developing countries like ours. And always seek help from fellows and our project advisors. And in case any modification is required, we need to seek uh, help from the advisors. And we, I did get uh, very fruitful advice and then 
I had to be flexible throughout because lots of changes did happen during the uh, implementation of the project. That's it. Thank you.